Hey guys, it's Anastasia, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to the first video of 2020. So I kind of missed the videos that were done in the beginning of January, you know, all those people doing the best books of 2019 and the worst books of 2019 and I kind of really want to do that before I start doing any other videos. So I might be a little bit behind but either way this is my top five books of 2019. 2019 has been an okay reading year for me, mainly because I think I read 27 books. I didn't even reach my Goodreads goal. The thing is, I haven't been able to reach my Goodreads goal for the past three years or so, because my year has always been so unpredictable especially since um, starting university. The year might start a bit better so I will be reading and then suddenly will go hectic and then I won't be able to read for a month or so and yeah so I was reaching the end of 2019 and I kept seeing my number 27 I was like yes I'm gonna I can read eight books I can do it but then exams happened and I didn't read so didn't reach the goal of 35. To be honest with you, I'm actually pretty okay with 27 books because most of them were quality books and I did read more than I read in 2018 because I was in such a reading slump during that time so I'm actually kind of relieved that I somehow got back into the reading wagon. Before we get started I just want to mention there is no like top one or least favorite book in this list because mostly because I'm really really bad at choosing which one is my favorite book or like favorite TV show I'm just really bad at choosing one thing so those these are my top five books of 2019 in no particular order so first book I would love to mention is The Final Empire by Brandon Sanderson and to be honest with you, in order to give you a description about this, I had to Google it and go to different websites and actually make my own description. One, because I'm terrible at doing descriptions. And two, because I don't know what to say without spoiling the book. Because I've been known to spoil a lot of people about a lot of things, so... Yes. For a synopsis, uh, with The Final Empire, we're introduced in a world where the villain has actually won the war and has been ruling for the past hundreds and hundreds of years. His name, he goes actually by Lord Ruler. And the main character, or one of the main characters, better put, is Kelsier, who has been imprisoned in one of the most vile prisons that Lord Ruler has. When Kelsier escapes the prison, he gets together his old thieving crew and they decide to overthrow the Lord Ruler by stealing the final empire's treasury and collapsing its economy. The most interesting part of this story is the magic system. In this world, magicians are called allomancers and they draw their powers from metals. So what they do is they have in small bottles um, small pieces of metals and what they do is they drink them and they burn them inside them and you can use I think and don't quote me on that you can use iron to pull at something and then you can use uh, I had to check from the book because I could not remember for the life of me by the way everything um, about the magic system is actually in the back of the book which is really really useful because you tend, to, if you're like me, you tend to forget things and iron is used to pull on nearby metals, still pushes, teen enhances the senses. For example, copper hides allomancy because allomancers are deemed very dangerous and they're actually hunted down or they're used by the richer families. So it's really interesting to see about this type of magic system that I've never seen in any other book. The plot is so intricate. The fight scenes are like the best fighting fight scenes I've ever read in any book ever. I felt like I was there, like my heart was beating so hard. I'm actually reading the second book right now, which is oh so good. Hopefully, if all goes well, it's gonna be on my top five uh, books for the next year as well. 
Next we have Uprooted by Naomi Novik and this is a book I actually read in the beginning of 2019. It might have been the first book I read so I can't remember a lot of this because my memory is really really crappy but the whole point is this is uh, centered in a village which is surrounded by woods that are full of dark magic and they keep expanding and swallowing the village so they have um, a wizard called the dra dubbed the dragon who protects them in exchange for a girl so every 10 years he gets a girl he chooses a girl from the village who stays with him 10 years and then he lets her go and gets another girl this year it's uh the main character is agnieszka it's such a weird name um i think it's agnieszka i love the sound of that <laughs> um it's her turn and she's very baffled because um to everyone's mind she's very plain she can't do much she always messes up things she's very clumsy but he gets he picks her out of everyone and suddenly we have the we're introduced to this whole other story of magic and mystery and beasts and potions and it's such a great novel not because it it reads like a fairy tale, it really does, but because the characters are so complex and so layered and I think the main character's development is fascinated, fascinating. It starts with her being very hesitant and she kind of develops in such a, to such a strong female character she she's still impulsive that's something that i hated about her she was impulsive in the beginning and she kept being impulsive until the very end but she had more sense and she was more she was stronger and she was very resilient and just she was an amazing main character the thing about this book is that a year later i still remember how vivid it was in my head and i can still picture scenes of it in my head because it was so beautifully written and the writing was so lush and descriptive and amazing that it completely sucked you in and it didn't let you go until the very end. If you haven't read this, read it. If you like fantasy, if you like fairy tales, if you like magic and magic training and all of that, you're gonna love this. Next up is Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I really hope I said that correctly. And this is basically basically a fictional biography of a band in the 70s which was which used to be really really huge and then it collaborated or actually it united with a famous singer called Taylor Taylor no Daisy Jones. It's basically about what was happening backstage during all those award wins and those amazing songs that topped the charts and it's it's what you would expect from a band in the 70s there is a lot of drugs and sex and drama and just um getting to know life growing up and it's just so raw and amazing and beautiful and it made me laugh and it made me cry and it made me like angry angry as well it felt so realistic and the way it was written it was so original because it's as if the characters were being interviewed so it doesn't have any description it's just the band members talking about their experience it was so original i've never read anything like this and Daisy Jones was such a great character, my gosh, she was very powerful and she never took no for an answer and she was very strong-headed and of course she got into drugs really early into the novel and you see her struggling through that and struggling through a bad divorce and that and partying and losing herself and falling for a guy that was not available and it was just it was such a raw description of a woman's life but also a woman that worked so hard to go where she wanted to be and even if you're not into very um fictional books about music and a bit more drama and not at all fantasy 
It's an amazing book to read because it's very original in the way it was written. It has amazing distinctive characters and if you're into really empowering, very powerful, strong ass women, go read Daisy Jones and the Six and you will not be disappointed. Number four is Never Night by Jay Christoph and that took me by such a surprise. It had been recommended to me by one of my best friends but I was really late to the party because I don't know why, I keep being recommended books and I keep putting them off even though I really know I'm gonna love them. But it took me like a year to actually pick this book up and when I did, oh my god. I'm actually going to read you the synopsis from Nevernight just because I'm afraid I'm gonna butcher this and if I start saying a description it's just gonna take me like five minutes and I don't want this video to be that long so here we go. So, in a land where three suns almost never set, a fledgling killer joins a school of assassins seeking vengeance against the powers who destroyed her family. Daughter of an executed traitor, Mia Corver is barely able to escape her father's failed rebellion with her life. Alone and friendless, she hides in a city built from the bones of a dead god, hunted by the Senate and her father's former comrades. But her gift for speaking with the shadows leads her to the door of a retired killer and a future she never imagined. Now Mia is apprenticed to the deadliest flock of assassins in the entire Republic, the Red Church. You get the point. Basically, this book takes place in a world where there is never a night, where sh the main character manipulates shadows, which you can imagine how difficult that is, where there is always light and sun, and it takes place in a school of assassins. How cool is that? No, seriously. How cool is that? The classes were so interesting because you had a class for pickpocketing where basically they, their homework was a list of things they had to steal and the most dangerous the thing was you had to steal the more points you got towards the end of the year and then you had a class for seduction which was called I think the room of masks or something like that because Seduction was partly wearing a different face and then you had a class for battling and using different martial arts and you also had a potions class which was so deadly that half the students died because she got in one day and she was like so you're basically all poisoned and if you don't know the antidote you're dead. It keeps you at the edge of your seat because you never know what's gonna happen and the plot moves so fast and intricately and oh he, here's the thing Jay Christoph is amazing when it comes to twists he's really not afraid of to kill characters to betray characters to change the circumstances from one scene to another like you would be laughing your ass off and suddenly you'll be like what just happened because everything's crumbling around you and everyone is dying. The author actually had notes at the end of each page which kind of explains a bit of background or he had sarcastic comments and you, you didn't have to read them but reading them added so much to the um, enjoyment of the story. However, I do need to stress that it is a very 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 dark book and it can get a bit heavy in some occasions. So if you're not into that kind of stuff, I would not read this because it is classified as adult. It's nowhere near YA because of the way it describes injuries, death. It's not for everyone. Before I actually go to my fifth and final book for my top five books of 2019, I do have an honorary mention and that is... Carry On by Rainbow Rowell. Now, I know I'm very, very late into this fandom, but I read this during the summer and it was such a fun time. It actually convinced me to read Harry Potter. If you didn't know, Carry On is basically the fictional retelling of Harry Potter where the main character, Simon, is the worst chosen one ever. It takes place in an alternate Hogwarts and 
this universe's, I guess, Harry Potter, who is Simon Snow, is basically a bad hero. He's, he can't control his magic, he basically doesn't know how to use it. When, wherever he is, people get injured and it's just... Oh. And the thing about this book is that you have an amazing, amazing romance between... Well, basically Harry Potter and Draco Malfoy, although in here they're introduced as Simon Snow and Buzz... something. I can't remember his last name, but it, it is such an amazing book. It's Most of all, it's fun. It's so easy to read through. It was so funny. It was so adventurous. It went by so fast. And the magic, I don't know, it was very magical and vivid in my head. And I enjoyed it very, very much. If you're looking at something, looking for an LGBTQ romance and a very light-hearted and very funny and fun adventure story, go for this one. Last but not least is a book that I actually do not have with me, but it is again by one of the authors I just mentioned, and it is Illuminae by Jay Christoph and Amy Kaufman. I think of all the books I just mentioned, I'm gonna struggle give you, giving you a description for Illuminae because it's very weird. Basically, um, the people from a planet are divided in three different spaceships because that planet was destroyed by an attack from a spaceship of a certain company, I think, or another planet, I guess. And they learned that there is suddenly a plague in one of those um, ships. So what they're trying to do is survive while this plague is kind of spreading from ship to ship while also the other, you know, the villainous ship, I guess, is tailing them and trying to destroy them. The thing about Illuminae is that each page is a different... it's written in a different way. It's, um, it's actually a file of different documents, so you have what the camera is writing, you have secret files, you have texting, actually no, emails. It's an amazing way to tell a story and a very unexpected way because you wouldn't think that you would get into a story and really invest in characters when there is no description, you don't get to see something from their point of view. But it worked and it worked so well because I got sucked into this world my heart beat so fast in so many occasions and I was in the edge of my seat, on the edge of my seat and it was, it was just amazing, it was such a great book so read it, like even if you don't read sci-fi, even if you don't read fantasy I do believe it's worth reading and that was it! That was my top 5 books of 2019 I really hope I gave you Good enough descriptions, it's my first time that I actually tried and it took me so long, oh my god. I'm hoping to get better but those were my top 5 books, I really enjoyed them. I think I read some pretty quality books and I was really pleased by the new authors I was introduced to and the new worlds I got to read and I can't wait to continue all of this series. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.